Hey guys, welcome to Dreamframer Photography, the place where you can learn a lot about photography, photo editing, as well as how to sell photos online. If selling photos is something that interests you, make sure that you're subscribed because I'm making the most detailed guide on YouTube on how to do this. Now, remember how I told you that whenever you want to sell a picture with somebody in it, you need to ask that person first to sign a document called model release to actually allow you to sell a picture with them in it. The same thing if you have a picture of somebody's property. You would have to ask the owner of that property to sign a document called property release this time to actually allow you to sell a picture with their property in it. All that doesn't apply to editorial images. You can sell editorial images without anybody's permission. And that's how you discover that you can actually sell all those vacation images without asking strangers to sign a model release. And I can tell you, those images are selling pretty well, especially if you are traveling to popular tourist locations. There is another important difference between commercial and editorial images that I want to point out. When you're taking editorial images for sale, you usually don't have time to create the full setup. Reviewers on stock photo websites know that, and that's why they're usually less strict when they review your editorial images. This is not the case, however, if you're creating editorial images in the studio and you're taking pictures of, let's say, famous products and famous brands. In those cases, the highest quality will still be expected as usual. However, if you're outside on the street, and especially if you're taking a picture of something newsworthy, then the lower quality will probably be accepted. Okay, that was enough talking, let's move to an example. Okay guys, I have this picture for you, I took it in Mexico, near Mexico City. The pyramid that you see here is called the Pyramid of the Moon, and the people are just tourists walking on so-called Avenue of the Dead, visiting the pyramids. Since we can't ask all these people to sign a model release for us, we can't sell this image as a commercial image. However, there is another way to sell it. We can sell it as an editorial image. Now let me show you what an editorial image actually is. An editorial image is an image that cannot be used for commercial advertising purposes, but can be used in non-commercial purposes, like in a newspaper or magazine article, on a blog or website for descriptive purposes, in a non-commercial presentation, and so on. Now, let's see what you can and what you can't do when editing an editorial image. You can do basic adjustments like lightness, contrast, color, cropping, straightening, noise reduction, sharpening, fixing color aberration, and lens distortion. But you can't add or remove objects, change the color of objects, alter the size and shape of objects, or change the scene in any other way. Now, let's get back to our photo and see what we can do. I'm gonna zoom to 100% to see if the photo is sharp enough. And it looks good, but I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of sharpening. I'm gonna click on this sharpening tab and just pull this slider a little bit to the right, this much. This looks good. Let me see if I didn't add a lot of noise to the sky. No, it looks good. Let me zoom out. And now, I just want to decrease a little bit the contrast because these shadows are pretty strong, which is understandable, it was a sunny day. So I'm gonna go back to the basic tab and just pull this slider a little bit to the right to lighten up the shadows, maybe something like this. This is good. And then the saturation, we don't really have to touch it, maybe just a little bit of vibrance, but that's it. I don't want to overdo it. Now, another thing that I can do is to correct lens distortion if there is any. Over here this button says lens correction. Camera Raw and Photoshop both have presets for a lot of lenses. And uh, the lens information is embedded in the photo, so if I just uh, use this tab and click this checkbox here that says enable lens profile correction, then hopefully Camera Raw will recognize the lens and correct the image automatically. You just saw it, it happened. I mean, Camera Raw already knows what kind of lens this is. So it's that easy. Just click this checkbox and your image will be corrected for a lens distortion. Now I'm gonna click on this color tab and click remove 
chromatic aberration, if there is any, of course. Let me zoom to show you what chromatic aberration is. This picture doesn't have a lot of it, I can tell right away, but maybe around this cane here, if I zoom to more than 100%, I can show it to you. So this is 300% zoom. You see this green halo and purple halo around the, the cane? And also here, purple and green. That's chromatic aberration. This is not a lot at all. No reviewers will be reviewing your image at 300%. But sometimes can be really bad. And there is a way to fix this in Camera Raw. So let me go back to that zoom of 300% so I can show you that. Over here uh, in the Lens Correction tab, we're still in the Lens cor Correction tab, we had a Profile and we have Color tab. Now I'm just gonna click this checkbox that says Remove Chromatic Aberration and you pay attention to what's happening around this cane. Do you see how it disappeared? It already disappeared. Let me turn it on again so you can see. You see purple and green now? If I click on it again, then it disappears again. This picture has very little of it, so we don't have to touch these sliders down here. But if it's really bad, then you can try to pull these sliders to the right to fix it. And you can also target uh, different shades of purple and green by moving these sliders here. But you have to use your eye for that, to match the shade that you want to correct with the shade on the photo, okay? Now let me move back these sliders and zoom out, because we fixed it just by clicking on this checkbox to remove chromatic aberration. And that's basically it. I've done all the adjustments I wanted to do for this photo. This is an editorial photo. We are not gonna remove any logos or brands. We are not gonna ask these people for a model release. So I'm just clicking open image to import the image to Photoshop. The only thing that I see now is that this image needs some straightening because if you take a look at these two corners on the pyramid, you will see that they're not really on the same height. So let me click on view show and grid. Now you can clearly see what I'm talking about. When you take a look at this corner and the same corner on the right side, you will see that the second one is higher than the first one. So let me go back and uh, let me first uh, copy the background. I'm gonna drag it down to a new layer icon and create a new layer and while that new layer is active I'm gonna go to edit transform rotate now our image has these little points on the corners so I'm just gonna grab one point click my mouse button down and while holding it down I'm gonna rotate the image and look at the grid this is I think good enough now when we see these two corners they look fine so I'm just gonna double click to apply the transformation. There is one thing that you have to pay attention to when you are rotating images. Let me zoom in and move picture to the right. You see this here? This happened because we rotated the top layer. Let me turn off the background layer so you can see it better. Now, if this were a commercial image, we would be able to fill these gaps with a healing brush tool. Let me turn off the grid so you can see that better. Since this is an editorial image, I can just crop it. So let me click on Rectangle Market Tool and drag a selection like this. And then I'm gonna go to Image, Crop. And that's how we cropped our image. The next thing I wanna do is save this image in Photoshop format so I can edit it later if I need to. So I'm just going to File, save as, just like with any other image. I'm gonna change the name to Pyramid, leave PSD format, which is a Photoshop format, and click Save. Clicking OK. The whole image is still selected. That's not important. I'm just gonna deselect it. You see these marching ants around. So I'm just gonna go to Select and click Deselect. And now, I want to add some metadata to this image. 
Now this is something that is specific for editorial images. Let me show you. Editorial images have a specific format for the description. The description has to answer these questions. Where, meaning town, city and country. When, meaning month, day and year. Who and or what, meaning who is in a picture and what is going on on the picture. So the format for the description would be location, meaning the town or the city, comma, country, dash, month and day, comma, year, column, who and what. Let me show you on our example. I'm gonna go to File, File Info, and as with any other picture, I'm gonna add the title. The title has a free form, so you don't have to worry much about it. I'm gonna put something like tourists visiting the Pyramid of the Moon. Okay, and now our description. Remember what we said, first the location. The town is called San Juan Teotihuacan, comma, Mexico, space, dash, space. And now if you don't remember the date, you have it down here in this dialogue. So October 13th, comma, 2016, column. And now, who and what? In our case, we can put something like tourists walking along the Avenue of the Dead, visiting the Pyramid of the Moon, and then for clarification, add the location again in San Juan, Teotihuacan, near Mexico City, Mexico, period. This format of the description will be accepted on all websites that sell editorial photos online. We have the town, the exact town, San Juan Teotihuacan, the country, Mexico, the date, and then who and what is going on on the picture. In the end, you can mention the location again as a clarification. Now I'm gonna choose that the image is copyrighted, put my copyright notice and click OK. Going to File, clicking Save, just to save it in Photoshop format, to keep all the information, and now I want to save it as JPEG. So, choosing JPEG, clicking Save, keeping the quality at maximum and clicking OK. Just to mention, you can decrease the size of this image to close to 6.3 megapixels, but I'm not gonna go into details on how to do it and why to do it. Also, I'm not gonna talk about adding keywords to the image because that's covered in the same video. Just go to my playlist, How to Sell Photos Online, find a video, Stock Photography Episode 14, Creating Stock Photography Example 1, or click on the card that showed up on the top of this video, and you can start watching from 11 minutes and 50 seconds. Guys, just to remind you, I'm gonna be holding free live webinars on photo editing here on my YouTube channel. You can all participate, you can ask me questions in that live chat and I'm gonna be answering them in real time. You will basically be watching me editing photos in Photoshop and I'm gonna be explaining everything I'm doing. To be informed about the date and the time of those webinars, go to my website dreamframer.photography slash news. I will not be able to make a separate video for every webinar to announce it. So be sure to bookmark that page and check it from time to time. Now again, subscribe if you still haven't, we have a lot of good stuff to cover. Give me a like, send me an email, ask me a question, leave a comment, that's what motivates me to make more videos. See you in the next one.